So today I have this on the bench. This is something I featured a while back, but uh, feels more appropriate to do a better video on it than I did back then. Um, since I had it out, we had a, a, a segment, uh, a seven segment display. One of the segments in this Neutron tube went bad. So this is what I took out. Pretty interesting. Um, Catch the backstory on this. This um, appears to be a homemade clock, um, although they did a real nice job on it. It's going to smoke. Uh, looks like the person bent it themselves. That slips right on. Um, gives it a nice look. And possibly painted the tube so it didn't have any. Um, illumination on other components to give it a nice clean look with the, the cover on. That's my guess. So this is based on the MM5314 and like I said I just put a new tube in it. Um, I had this little surround piece that shrouds the back of the tube that I also put on there in lieu of painting the tube. Um, but MM5314 using a u unique situation here. Uh, typically either four or six digit clocks you would see th that IC used. So what's going on here? So we have what's called a single digit clock. Monodigicron was its uh, nickname. And um, back in 1973 there's an article written by Michael S. Robbins and you might have heard me mention his name before he used to um, do some stuff for um, Charles Carangella I think Michael S. Robbins was the the electrical designer um, for a lot of the stuff that Carangella had put out um, but uh, at any rate, this is uh, Popular Electronics, September 1973, Build the Mono Digicron. And when I found this on eBay years ago, it wasn't working. Um, I was very lucky to come across this article because it really helped me understand how this circuit's supposed to work. The um, MM5314, typically with six digits, would scan. Um, seconds, minutes, and then hours as it's multiplexed and hooked up. Um, what they got going on here is this flashes one digit at a time representing the time as you would read it 555. Okay, so it's 555 uh, in 12 hour time. So what they had to do, they had to trick this thing to scan hours, minutes, and seconds instead of its conventional uh, seconds, minutes, and hours. So they use a pretty interesting circuit. And in this article, they have a schematic. And it was very helpful in uh, debugging this clock when I got it. Um, use a 7490 and a, a little strobing and a relaxation oscillator going on here and it uses the output enable pin on the 5314 um, to blank in between digits um, so it's pretty interesting how they got that laid out um, that's just it in a nutshell um, for more information on that, it gets a little detailed. You can see the article. You can uh, search for that online. Again, it's Popular Electronics, September 1973. Look up Mono Digicron, and maybe you can build yourself one. It works the same way. So, this is a little uh, capture of the inside here. Slip the cover back on. Mm. 
gives it a nice look. So we have some controls on the back. Some of them are ratted um, a little bit different than what the schematic shows, but it just uses uh, some of the more features that this chip has that you don't really need. Um, you know, if you want to display seconds, you could do that too, but um, that gap of not displaying the seconds gives you that pause right there. This pause lets you know it's the beginning of the time sequence coming up. So there you go, 5, 5, 8, okay, 5, 58, and again that pause. That's where the seconds would be coming in. You operate the seconds, you'd never be able to decipher the time in the flashing sequence one digit at a time. So um, It doesn't have a hold on it, which is typical uh, for 5314, so you can sync it to other clocks. Um, and again, setting this clock is a little, little unique. You have to just kind of press the fast until it cycles through some numbers and then release it and then let it flash a sequence and see how close you are to the actual time of the day. Um, and then once you start getting close, uh, you can use the slow set. And again, it's um, you just hold it for a little bit and then you got to sit back and watch see what time it displays then. So I can give you a little sense of what we're doing here. I'm going to press the fast. I'm holding the fast. Oh, what I do have to activate is the set mode first. That's the other switch. So go into set mode and uh, I'm going to press the fast now. And then just wait and see what time it displays. So now we're up to 7 o'clock already. 7.03 now you want to get 705. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Now we'll work with the slow button. We're going to aim for 705 or 706. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to hold it and release. And let's see. 704. Okay. We're going to get one more minute. Hold it. Release. That's the slow button I'm using. 705. There you go. So that's a little guessing game when you go to set the uh, single digit clocks. Uh, I do have one other one, um, the Time Beacon Clock, uh, Electronics USA sold that to me, Jack Roblin, great guy. His um, circuit design is a little different than this one uses, um, but the strobing sequence of the digits is a little faster in sequence than this one is, and that makes it a little easier and quicker to set. So, there you have it, it's a homemade uh, this guy named Ted is showing 1974. I don't know where Ted is today, but um, I was quite happy when I found this clock and was able to save it and get it working. So there you have it, the Mono Digicron using the classic MM5314. And um, again, popular electronics, uh, Mono Digicron article, September 1973. Also, in this book here, um, Electronic Clocks and Watches, written by the same guy, Michael S. Robbins, um, does describe the Mono Digicron as well as some other digital clock circuits I like. Um, but this article in here, the schematic is a little different yet than what was in the uh, popular electronics article. So that's interesting. Same guy designed the circuit um, with minor differences. But there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we have more clock stuff, if that's what you like, uh, coming up. Enjoy.